Hello everyone, day three of our HackerRank journey. Today we're going to solve the dynamic array problem and let's read together this um, problem definition and try to find a solution. So first of all, we need to create a list. It's called sec list of n empty sequences where each sequence is indexed from 0 to n minus 1. So as always, um, array indexes starts from 0 to n minus 1 where n is the dimension of this list in this case. So we need to create an integer last answer and we will initialize it to zero. So what we are going to do here, um, the two types of queries, so we need to query something that can be performed are described below. So we have two type of queries. The first query is characterized by the um, first element set to one and the second query is, uh, has the first element set to two. So the pattern for the query is this one. So we have one, uh, the value for x, and the value for um, for epsilon here. So in case we have query type one, we need to find the sequence at index, this thing here. So we have to, to do a XOR operation and a modulo operation to find the index. And then we need to append integer epsilon to sequence sec in the first case. So when we have a query of type one, we need to do this thing here. Um, otherwise, if we, are a if, we, if we have a type 2 query, so the pattern is the same actually, we need to find the sequence uh, as defined before. So we need to find this index by solving this operation. Then we need to find the value of element epsilon modulo size in sec. So this new, this new sequence here and assign it to last answer and then we will print the new value of last answer on a new line. So that's basically what we are going to do now. So we need to define these two different uh, situations and we need to just perform the operation they say we need to do. So let's check if there are other things we need to consider here. So given n, q and q, q, q queries, execute each query, this is the bitwise XOR operation, as we said. Input format, okay, let, let me just uh, go through this uh, example here. So this is a sample input, so five will be the number of queries we have, and two, I guess, the, um, the typology of, um, the number of uh, different typology queries we have, two, okay. So here we have, for example, query one, zero, five. So X is zero and uh, Epsilon is five and so on, I guess. So the output in this case will be seven and three. And here we have an explanation of, um, of how, how, they, how they get this, uh, this, this output here. The problem definition is really wordy, guys. So if you want just to take a second, you can pause the video and uh, read it. I'm, I just don't want this to be a really long video. So I'm skipping this explanation to the example here, but I'll put a link in the description, description to the problem. So if you want, you can check this out and uh, it will be really useful. So I think we can just go and uh, try to solve the problem step by step um, and code our function here. Yeah, let's try this. Here's our function. We need to complete this function here. So dynamic array. Uh, we need in output a list of integers. We have an input n and a list of lists of queries because as we said before, guys, the query is composed by three integers. Uh, so what we what we are going to do here, actually, we will follow this, um, this guideline here. So we will create a list. We will create an integer called last answer. Let's do this first. So let's create our list. And actually, I'm going to create uh, another list of lists. We need this for computation reasons. You will understand in a moment. So let's create a list of uh, list. And this will take integer values. Okay, let's call it, I don't know, computation. And this will be a new array list type. Mm, so 
we declared our last answer here we declared this computation uh, list of lists and our result uh, array list here so what we're going to do we we are going to uh, let's say we're going to populate this computation here because we need it to be as a, um, of dimension n so we will basically do this in java but i think there are easier easier ways to do in, in other languages but i'm using java here so let, that's it and uh, i'm creating this easy for loop and um, i'm creating a new array list and this array list will be of integers of course let's call it error okay new and let's add this um, So at each iteration we start from zero until n. So the last index will be n minus one. At each um, index we will populate this computation, adding an empty array just to, to get the dimension, just to populate it with uh, with components. So we will need this one because now we are going to loop through our queries and we are going to execute each query as as the problem is uh, is describing here. So First of all, we will we will write another for loop. Uh, where we are now? Yeah. Okay. So new for loop for your joy. And uh, this time we will loop until queries dot length dot size. This time because this is a list. So since this is a list of lists, we want to get this list here, which is actually one of these. So at each iteration, we will consider one query. So first time we will consider this one, then this one, and, and so on, right? So let's do it. So here we have, um, a new list of integer let's call it q because it's a, it's the first query we are considering it's the query we are considering at each time so this will be queries dot get i right so first time will be zero and and so on and now we have to differentiate between the two cases so if we have a value of uh, the first value of q if it is one we will do this thing here if the first value of q is 2 we will do this other thing here so basically we're going to check this element and then deciding what to do next so if q dot get the value in position 0 and if this is equals to 1 we will do something else we will do something else of course so in this case, what we need to do, let me just check it now. So we need to find the sequence at index this thing here and then append epsilon to sequence. So basically, we're going to do computation. That's where we need our computation thing here. Because we're going to get position one and we will XOR it with the value we have in um, in last answer we will uh, let me just add some parentheses here just to be sure and modulo n right and then we will add this element position we will, add, we will add to to our computation list here in um, index this thing here we will add the element we find on position 2 because in position 2 we have the epsilon value 
I hope it makes sense guys but if it's not clear just try to to read again the the problem because as I, as I said before it's really worthy but it's not that complicated so this is the the second case so we need to add something something else here so let's me let me just create the yeah, it was called sec sequence and we're going to take computation dot get it's similar to before so we'll do q get one let's sort this with uh, last answer and modulo n so we're going to save in, uh, in this list here the list we find in this position of computation so this now we just need to update the last answer value and then we need to add this uh, this new value of uh, last answer to our result so So I'm doing this because as you have noticed here, th this is the operation I'm doing right now. So we're going to press dot add last answer. Okay. And we are going to return outside our for loop return press. I think this should work. Let's try it. Okay, we have a compilation error because we are stupid, so I am stupid because I forgot here. Yeah, this makes no sense. A syntax error. Line 31, let's see here. This makes no sense. Okay, so it's working. Let's check again. Okay, fine. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope uh, I hope it helped you solve this problem and try to understand better this uh, um, this problem here because it might sound tricky when you read all this wordy description, but actually it's not that hard. So if you have any other question, please let me know in the comments and uh, see you in the next one.